It happened that the very same people who threw all these various things upon her and ridiculed her and raised their voices against her began falling on their knees imploring her intercession for them. And Sister Faustina wrote that she didn't hold it against them because all this helped her to be sanctified the sooner. Helen, who'd only two terms of schooling, was given various menial tasks in the convent, everything from gardener to doorkeeper and general kitchen help too, whilst assisting in the main task of the community in rehabilitating wayward girls by her prayers and sacrifices. Helen asked the Lord for whom else she should pray. And it was then that Helen had the first mystical vision, revealing the conditions of the souls in purgatory. In a moment, she wrote, I was in a misty place full of fire in which there was a great crowd of suffering souls. They were praying fervently for themselves, but to no avail. Only we can come to their aid. I asked these souls what their greatest torment was. They answered me in one voice that their greatest suffering was longing for God. I saw Our Lady visiting the souls in purgatory. The souls call her the Star of the Sea. Since that time, I'm in closer communication with the suffering souls in purgatory. Had Sister Faustina now taken her final vows to enter the congregation? No, she went through the normal preparations of a postulancy and then a novitiate of two years. And as her novitiate was coming to a close, she went through the spiritual process called the Dark Nights, uh, which is a purifying process that people close to God go through. And uh, because of her obedience, she went through this process very quickly, and it prepared her for what was to come with the mission that the Lord had in store for her. I am standing in the chapel of the community of the Sisters of Our Lady of Mercy on the outskirts of Krakow in a place called Wagivniki. It is in this house that Sister Faustina made her two-year novitiate a period of training to become a nun in the community of the Sisters of Our Lady of Mercy. It was in this chapel that Sister Faustina received her habit and her name. And it is also in this chapel where she pronounced her first vows and also her perpetual vows five years later. Many hours Sister Faustina spent in prayer precisely here, often before this altar where before the image of the Divine Mercy was installed, there was an image of the Most Sacred Heart of Jesus, a favorite place for her prayers. Sister Faustina, after her profession, was cook in this house for a while before she was transferred elsewhere. She used to get very upset in the kitchen during her novitiate because the pots were so heavy she was unable to drain them and it did not escape the sisters' notice that she began to avoid that task. Sister Faustina complained to the Lord about her weakness. From today on, he said, you will do this easily, I shall strengthen you. Trusting in God's words, she hurried next time to get to the pot first. She picked it up with ease, and as she lifted the lid instead of potatoes, she saw bunches of roses, beautiful beyond description. She stood there astonished by this vision, and heard a voice within her saying, I change such hard work of yours into bouquets of beautiful flowers, and their perfume rises up to my throne. From then on, she was very much happier with her work in the kitchen. When her younger sister Wanda came to visit her in March, Sister Faustina learned from her that she was suffering from a great depression. For no other soul did Sister Faustina bring so many sacrifices and prayers before the throne of God as she did for the soul of her sister. She felt that she had forced God to grant her sister the grace of recovery. When I reflect on all this, I see that it was truly a miracle, she wrote. Now I can see how much power intercessory prayer has before God. So what was the beginning then of what we now call the Divine Mercy or her locutions with Christ? Well, shortly after her first vows, she was sent to the sister's house in Płock in Poland, where the sisters had a bakery as well as the home for women off the streets, which they were trying to rehabilitate. And there, 
one evening on the 22nd of February 1931, as she came back to her room, she had a vision of Christ and she heard him tell her, paint an image according to the example that you see with the signature, Jesus, I trust in you. Have this image venerated first in your chapel and then throughout the world. When she told all this to her confessor, she received this for a reply. That refers to your soul, he told her. Certainly paint God's image in your soul. Coming out of the confessional, she again heard words such as these, My image already is in your soul, and I want this image to be solemnly blessed on the first Sunday after Easter. That Sunday is to be the Feast of Mercy. Her superior told her to go and seek the advice of a priest, but her confessor, Father Sapochko, didn't understand her either, and so she went from one to another but found no peace. She took her perpetual vows in 1933 in the chapel in Krakow, but soon Helen's health began to decline. Her superior, alarmed, sent her away for a rest, and Sister Faustina set out happy in the knowledge that she had permission to stop on the way at Chester Hover, one of the most treasured shrines of Our Lady in Poland where she would see the icon of Our Lady of Jasnagora. Jasnagora is the name of the hill on which the shrine is built. By the middle of the 15th century, it was famous throughout Central Europe. The history of Our Lady of Czestochowa is inextricably interwoven with the history of Poland. The icon itself is believed to have been painted by St. Luke and has been venerated for over 600 years. Pilgrims from all over Europe come to venerate this miraculous icon. It was here that Sister Faustina offered her perpetual vows to the Mother of God for Poland. Our Lady said to her, Fear nothing, my faithful daughter. Speak boldly about the divine mercy to all people and let souls be filled with trust towards him. Mercy is the greatest adornment of God's throne. Father, how did the diary come to be written in the first place? At the request of the confessor, he had her keep a diary uh, mentioning all these things that happened to her in her interior life so that from time to time he could read over it and know how to direct her. One of her early diary entries reads, I am to write down the encounters of my soul with you, O God, at the moments of your special visitations. I receive this order through him who for me is your representative here on earth who interprets your holy will to me. Jesus, you see how difficult it is for me to write, how unable I am to put down clearly what I experience in my soul. O oh God, can a pen write down that for which many a time there are no words? But you give the order to write, O oh God, and that is enough for me. And she was a literate enough young lady to be able to write a really intelligent... Oh no, oh no, she had hardly three winters of schooling, and... Uh... Practically every one of her words is misspelt. It's, it's phonetically written. And uh, strange enough, only the very technical long words that she must have picked up someplace are spelt correctly according to what I saw in her manuscript. But otherwise, um, it is very poor. Uh, she just puts down factually what she knows, what she heard, what she thinks, uh, without any corrections practically, and certainly no erasures whatever. How do we establish the authenticity of these diaries in that case? What makes you feel that they are authentic, as you obviously do? In what sense authentic? Well, I mean, uh, we have the original paper that they were written on that has been found without doubt to be Sister Faustina's writing. The um, diary was submitted to the investigation of a competent theologian who at first didn't want to have anything to do with it. He read it. And this caused him to begin again to read the whole diary. And then he was convinced that it must be analyzed and studied and uh, presented for what its value really is. And he became the staunchest defender of Sister Faustina and her cause. How did this image come to be painted? She went to the superior. She says, here, 